it's such an unbelievably intimate film. I mean, the 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 story itself, uh, the performances, the the way you filmed it. Um, Michelle, just to start, I'd love to hear you talk about when you first began the writing process on this. What was what was like the first element that you were working with? What, was it somebody w dealing with dementia? Was it the uh, Sylvia's character with a particular traumatic background she had? What, what was your po entry? Well, thank you, first of all, and thanks, everyone. I strangely had the point of departure was the scene where he's following her, uh, the class reunion. I don't know why, but I, I thought a class reunion and he follows her home. And then I started wondering who is she and who is, you know, what, what's going on. Uh, and I th at first I thought that he was guilty of, you know, that, that he would follow her because he, he actually did uh, what she accuses him of. Um, and it was going to be a revenge kind of, you know, drama. And then I changed my mind. Uh, my sister challenged me, said, come on, you've done that kind of dark movies before. You can do better. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I, and you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and I was at a moment in my life where I was in a more peaceful moment and it made more sense to write it this way. And I'm interested in broken people. That's been in most of my films. Uh, the film starts at the AA meeting and 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 the place where where Sylvia works. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm interested in in shining a light on people that's normally that are normally ignored both in life and on cinema. Mm -hmm. um, one of the really remarkable things to me about this film is you create. Um, it's not just a fan. Well, the the, fa the sense of family, of family relationships, with the the teenage daughter, with the the mother, with uh, just the whole family constellation is so fully realized and beautifully done. Um, could you maybe talk a bit about the casting process, starting with how you got these two incredible performers, um, but then how you built out the rest of the cast, uh, and especially because of the way I shoot. Uh, you know, with no coverage and all that. If I if I don't have fantastic actors on every scene and for every role, no matter how small the role is, um, it's not gonna be good. Uh, I was I never dreamed of having such great actors. Uh, it started with Jessica. <clears throat> Our agents did a good job at putting us together. Uh, I, yeah, I I always okay. I'll shut up. But <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. No, no, no. I was. I'll shut up. Damn. Uh, but they were good. Yeah, yeah. They they put us together, and uh, we had a Zoom uh, meeting, Jessica and I. And I I never want my. I, I always want to make the next movie sooner than later, and I was ready to shoot. So I'm like, oh, Jessica, just stay. And she's gonna waste my time, you know. <laughs> like, you know, do I really need? A Hollywood star to you know, <laughs> so they tell me she read the script, she likes it a lot, she watch your movies, like relax, you know. So I I don't relax. We have the Zoom meeting and I'm like, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, uh, you know, there's no trailer, no money, no nothing. Yes, I want to do it. I, I I know what an independent film is, you know, <laughs> and yeah, it, it all worked out. <laughs> and then I asked Jessica, who would you like? to work with uh, because I knew that the chemistry on screen is everything. I mean, once I took the challenge of, of not making the worst possible story and making a romantic movie to my own surprise, uh, yeah, I never thought I was going to make a romantic movie. Um, you need chemistry and how do you do that? So Jessica said that Peter's one of the actors she always wanted to work with. And and then the, my casting director, Susan Shopmaker, she's really fantastic. Uh, I trust her a big deal. And I mean, Merritt Weaver mm. and Jessica Harper and uh, Josh Charles, Elsie uh, Fisher, it's, it's a great cast. Yeah. 
Jessica, I'd love to hear, well, from both of you, starting with you, Jessica, when you first got the script, what was it that appealed to you in it? And, and was it more or less this story? Was the script fully formed by that point? Uh, when I first read the script, it was working with Michelle. That was uh, what was the most appealing, I mean, before I even read the script. And then as I started going through it, I was so blown away that it was this story that I thought could really go into um, this idea of like, okay, this was written in response to the Me Too movement. It's a revenge film. Uh, she's going to take revenge on all these men, you know, that have... You know, I kind of like, and then that didn't happen. And then um, I thought at the end maybe she'd find out he really did it. It'd be like a thriller. <laughs> and then that didn't happen. <laughs> and I realized, uh, I mean, I, I knew this because Michel is such an incredible filmmaker. I'd seen his films, but it was uh, another lesson to me of, of how special he is as a creative because he doesn't go down um, an obvious cliched path. And just when I thought, you know, I had an idea of what he would write, it, it, he surprised me on every step of the way. I mean, it's, yes, it is a film, who knows if you even thought about this in response to the Me Too movement, but it's also a film of, about healing. And how beautiful that that's the rebellious choice um, in a, industry that doesn't necessarily make that choice. Mm -hmm. Peter, when you, so you came to this on Jessica's recommendation, and, but when you read the script, what was your, uh, <laughs> what was your, uh, uh Jess, so Jess, Jessica threw, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, no, I, I did obviously want to work with Peter, but his career is well, yeah, of so course, of course. incredible. And we, and we got together. Say, yeah, yeah. I would say it's it's nice that I didn't know that I had been recommended by her because, you know, when actors come together and she had just won an Academy Award and, you know, what you want to do when two actors come together is that the power dynamic be relevant to the story. And that's one thing that Jessica did just like immediately. This woman had just won the Academy Award, literally, and stepped into this environment, and it was entirely about where these two people related to each other, right? So anything extraneous like that, you always kind of want compartmentalized somewhere. And I learned about it at Venice, and I'm, of course, extremely grateful because I think it is definitely a different kind of part that I'm normally offered. I know that it is. <laughs> and um, maybe it takes a fellow actor to, to bring that out. And I'm really, really thankful. And, and also a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> because I heard it wasn't your idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we got together and we started walking around and talking. And I it showed you my belly to show yeah, you that I had no yeah, six pack. Yeah. I, I, to, I told him, I, I don't want, because cause I, I, I knew that, you know, he's running marathons and stuff. So I was like, I, I want this guy's soul to be real, you know. I don't want him but to he, have like a six pack and Peter goes like, <laughs> here's my belly. Yeah. No, I was like in some, the worst physical shape that I really had ever been in. I had, I had uh, herniated a disc like a year before. And... When I came to him, I remember walking down the street, and if you've ever hurt your back like that, you know a back problem is a full body problem. And my right leg wouldn't go as far forward as my left leg when I walked. And so I would ha have to make this one take little baby steps. And then I was like, that guy from the Carol Burnett show, um, oh, come on, help me. <laughs> um, yeah. There, there's something great about being allowed to just embrace where you are physically, mentally, whatever. And when you work with someone like Michelle, it is such a collaboration that he wants you exactly where you are in your life and to bring that into the story. You know. could, Peter, could you talk a bit about how you sort of worked with the dementia and found that in your, perfor in your performance? Because I thought it was so beautifully and under so done with such understatement. It, it felt very real, but you weren't playing the dementia. 
I mean, yeah, well, um, it was very important to me that it be a story about this man and not <coughs> dementia, you know. Um, and I do think we have a habit of, in, and even in our own lives, is my uncle had dementia. And, um, you know, the day before he was diagnosed, we just thought he was being annoying a lot of the time and not remembering things. And we'd tease him about it and stuff. And then we heard he had dementia, and then we started treating him like a sick person. And I didn't want to treat this character like a sick person. I wanted to give him every chance that I could to have the most life that I could give him. And, um, and I do think it's just an obstacle. And, and he's at the beginning of his journey, and a lot of the, the people in the movie, like the people that relate to her character, like the people in her life are going trauma, scary, irritating, <laughs> stop talking about the same thing. And the people in my life are like, give me the keys to the car. You're not allowed to go outside. I mean, clearly this guy can walk down a sidewalk by himself on some level. I mean, and dementia is not an even thing, right? You have episodes and then things get a little better. Um, so it was very important for me to play it realistically by what I experienced in my own life, by people I talked to, because um, I think that it's important that we as a society think of them not as, oh, so-and-so's a schizophrenic or so-and-so's demented, he has dementia, but that that's so-and-so who is schizophrenic, Gary, who's schizophrenic, Bob, who happens to have dementia. Um, let people retain their dignity to the last possible moment. I thought um, the film has so much intimacy, I mean, especially between the two of you. And a lot of that I felt, I mean, it came from both of you, but the, I felt like the dementia led you to be, I was watching you be present. You, you were completely present for Sylvia or Jessica. I felt like in so many of the scenes, you're just being with her. There's, because you, you have no, I mean, you have a past, but you just felt very much in the moment with her responding to exactly what was happening in that moment, which was really beautiful to watch. It, it's, you can only do it if it's, you're doing it back and forth, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I've been very present on a lot of movie sets where nobody noticed. <laughs> it's lonely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jessica, I also wanted to ask, um, uh, I, I'm not familiar with the performer who played your daughter. Uh, absolutely incredible. Um, your scenes with her, your scenes with Merritt Weaver, amazing. And we'll get to your mom in a moment, but um, <laughs> terrifying. But could you talk about, I mean, I'd love to hear you talk about, um, right, the, the relationship with your daughter felt so real. And the, the, there was an ease between the two of you and all the different colors that go into a relationship, mother-daughter, teenager relationship. Um, could you talk about how you worked on that with her and, and what that process was like? This was a very strange uh, uh, film for me and process for me because it's unlike anything I've really ever done before. Normally, I work quite a bit with the other actors before we start shooting and go through backstories and do all of those things. But on this project, I really did it on my own. You know, Sylvia is so solitary in, in everything that, that, how she walks through the world, even with her daughter. I mean, it's clear that she has something, but she hasn't shared really who she is with her daughter. And she doesn't really share who she is with anyone until she meets Saul. Um, so we, I had met Brooke uh, with Michelle, and we had a meal together. But I was quite removed from everyone. And I found, and I didn't, again, I didn't do it on purpose, but I found it made them seek me out more in the way that they would see, try to seek out Sylvia to try to like to 
she's impenetrable and try to like understand what was going on with her. I really, I would come to set and not really talk to anyone. And I'm not, I'm really not like that. I, I would say hello and then I would just disappear. And with us, every, every time we spoke, it was when the camera was rolling and we shot in chronological order. So it was building the relationship between the two of them. And I really didn't know Peter but I got to know him when the camera was rolling through what we were doing. And same with Merritt. I mean, from the very first moment with her, I just felt so, she's so genius at what she does because she plays the scenes with such kindness, but at the same time, I just felt so judged and so shamed every time I was in a room with her and, uh, you know, Olivia and Sylvia. So it was, I didn't work with them in, in Brooke on creating this shared history because I thought it was so important that Sylvia be removed from it. And Brooke, man, what a great actress because there were a lot of scenes that Michelle would ask us to play with. We would shoot the scenes, but then he would, he would add things and, and I would challenge her a bit and she just really came back every every moment. She was so fantastic to work with. I just, that's amazing to hear. I mean, I definitely get the sense of, of remove of your character, of course, throughout, but there's such a sense of lived reality to that family. It's um, amazing to hear your what you just said about sort of what the process was like. Um, wow. Um, um, in the course of shooting in chronological order, did you um, stay very true to the script or, or were there moments where you improvised or, or? This scene was improvised. The bathtub scene? Yeah, it was in the script, it was a, a scene in a bed. Uh -huh. And we spoke and, and you know wondered if there was perhaps something different. And it was one take. I mean, we didn't know, we didn't really know what it was gonna do except I was gonna be in the bathtub crying <laughs> and he'd come in. And then we just played the scene. I think it was going to take too long to dry that shirt off exactly. to do it again. Exactly. One take. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Michelle, I, I'd love to hear you talk a bit about um, sort of as a director, I, I have some specific questions um, about how you, how you shot it. Um, for, well, a number of questions. But one, I noticed there were some key scenes where you had kind of a wide shot of a group of people, like the scene when they're playing Monopoly, the camera, it's a long scene that plays out with a single take. The camera's kind of low down, close to the board, and you see so much happens in that scene, and it's amazing. Uh, first of all, a dog walks through, then there's kids, so you have animals and children, but beyond that, there's like emotionally a lot going on. Um, and then the scene, of course, when you come back and encounter your mother for the first time. I mean, that scene is, I think, of static camera just taking in the whole thing. And it, those are like two of the most powerful scenes in the movie. And just, could you talk about your decision to, do, to shoot, it, shoot them that way and sort of, I don't know, did you do lots of takes of those or was it, what was your approach? The game scene, the Monopoly scene was kind of easy to shoot. I was lucky, or to put it in better words, we, we the casting was good, the kids were good, everybody understood the scene. So it was kind of easy to shoot. Uh, and they found the rhythm. And what I like about that scene is that the energy is very different before Sylvia arrives, it changes and it changes again. And it's almost like they were happy up until Sylvia arrives and ruins the day, <laughs> you know. And, 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 and so, so she's always like, but yeah, it's so sad. It's so sad, uh, and everything is because they're, they they've been, especially the sister, uh, not acknowledging what happened, you know, to her. I mean, Sylvia is such a beautiful character and enduring and giving, and she makes yeah. an effort every day. But she's mistreated on on a regular basis, and she's used to it. So that scene was easy to shoot. <clears throat> There's two dogs actually. <laughs> they belong to the house. They were the house dogs. They were on the script, the one dog. Um, again, Brooke is the main element on that scene. The main actress 
I think the way Brooke, she's such a yeah. ma mature actress for her age, uh, for any age, she's, she's amazing. The other scene was trickier because the Monopoly scene, even if it wouldn't have been good, I could edit the film without it. But the other scene, it, it, it's a key scene that I was worried about throughout the whole shooting. Like, yeah, today was good, but wait till we shoot that scene. If it's not good, there's no movie. Um, we shot it from that angle, and then I do gotta say that unlike in any other uh, scene, I shot several angles. I mean, several for me, like three more angles. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, and we didn't use them. I just used uh, Jessica Harper at the. I mean, we used at the beginning to show that there, that you know, Coming she up. comes into the house and she realizes the mother is there and. But uh, again, the actors were great. Jessica Harper was fantastic at playing it from her back and, and moving around and getting in front of Jessica, cover, almost covering from the camera. Mm -hmm. Merritt Weaver was amazing at you know yeah. what she's doing with her hands instinctively. I, I don't direct actors that much. I, I trust actors. I gave them a lot of space to work and they react, they're great because of that. I didn't tell Peter, stand behind Jessica. That's what Saul would have done. And he knows more about Saul than me. So I trust the actors a big deal. Uh, but I was very nervous that day. And when we shot the first or the second take, we turned to look at each other and we were like, I think we got it. I think it's good. I said, yes, but still we're going to shoot it 10 more times and from different angles. Because I, was, I couldn't gamble. But at the end, we used like the second take. We could have gone home early. Yeah. <laughs> I never go home early. Yeah. We would have shot something else. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's an incredible scene. I mean, and it's almost the same angle. We're showing the same part of the house. That house is so uncomfortable for Sylvia every time she goes there. And yeah. what's also sad about the confrontation scene is that this time she goes with a new boyfriend, like teenagers, and she's happy. And it's the first time that it should be nice. And then, of course, well, but at the end, it's satisfying because what Merit says I remember it's uh, you know finally yeah D um, can you talk a bit more about I'm sorry uh, I feel so bad I'm forgetting the actress's name who plays the mom oh Jessica Harper Jessica Harper I mean she's Jessica in, Harper she <laughs> Suspiria <laughs> she's really scary um, but what struck me about her she's uh, honestly she's terrified I I the first time she's alone with your daughter, I just felt, oh, oh, this is not good. This is, like, I felt the daughter was in peril. But but she's also not playing her as a monster. She's a human being. She's playing a fully human approach to that role. So I'm just curious how, what conversations you had with her, or did she just All, bring that? Almost none. I'll tell you how it was. I, I saw a self-cast, uh, a self-tape cast, uh, I, I never look at the names when I get self tapes. I just look at the tapes. I don't want to know who's who or what. And you know, and I didn't recognize Jessica because I hadn't seen her in a while. I remember her from Stardust Memories and Suspiria. But I, I just saw this actress. She was amazing. She did a perfect, you know, I knew I, I'm very lazy as a director. I don't want to direct much the actors. <laughs> so just get the good actors that will and she's also very clever. Then we had a long conversation, but she gave me all the answers. I, she did it, I gotta say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lazy. <Yeah. laughs> um, I'd also love to hear you talk a bit about music, namely the lack of score, um, which I loved. Uh, it's, I mean, your, your music was whiter shade of pale, right? Was, that was your music budget. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. Uh, was that... Did you know that from the beginning that you weren't going to score, or I wanted to play with the <clears throat> dementia more on an emotional level than a logical level. So when he follows her, I I think it works because it, it's more emotional than logical, and the music is very important to make that work. I picked this song because it's a the the melody is very powerful and nostalgic and melancholic. Uh, the Hammond is very, it, it, it's, I, I don't know what other song could have worked like, like so well. Uh, 
it evokes. It's a very evocative song. Um, a very expensive song too. <laughs> but there was no way around it. There was no way. And, and also what's great about uh, Why the Share to Fail is that the lyrics don't make any sense. So, because I would never do that thing where on the credits you're explaining, oh, this is a love story, you know, you just saw, la, la, la. It's like very, I, I respect the audience a big deal to do that. Yeah. So Why the Share of Pill? I wanted it to become part of the story. I wanted to, the, it's, a very, it's a different song each time you hear it. And at the end, she's listening to it, which gives it a different meaning, of course. And, and also so, so, someone told me, are you sure you want to use in the story the, the song that was important for him with the wife? I'm like, yeah, I trust the audience, you know. It doesn't have to be exclusively their song. I think when writer directors are, are take things in such a literal literal way, it's, it can be boring. You gotta trust the audience. You know? um, lastly, I want to ask all of you. To, um, I'm always curious about this. What the experience of seeing the film for a first time with the with an audience, right? Especially with a film like this. I, I'm, I'm picturing your set being very closed and uh, intimate and, and small crew, and then to um, experience this with an audience. Did, did, does the film play, were you surprised by how audiences reacted to the film, or did you have a, a surprised reaction to the film itself when you saw it? Um, bringing it out in the world, what's that been like for all of you? I mean, the, the first time we screened it at Venice, it was like a famous theater that was packed uh -huh. where people clapped for eight minutes after it was uh -huh. over people <laughs> were crying it, it was like a, it was an ecstatic crazy big reaction yeah so yeah I never <laughs> I was completely bowled over um, but I, I also watched it that for the first time then so I mean I'd seen a cut of it but not he changed it and um, it just I could feel how much it was resonating with me with other people and I thought great there's there's another good one they don't come along that often you know it's <laughs> like time to crack out the champagne yeah yeah it was it was amazing to have that experience of the film it did feel for me and, and I think I was sitting between you guys just in this exact position and that one, it, it felt almost sometimes embarrassing because I had seen the film before. Um, I hadn't seen it with other people really and then like the, the confrontation scene was really hard to sit in the audience and I think I was just kept saying to you, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. I just like, kept saying it like it was so difficult I couldn't just sit and enjoy the film. I really yeah. felt like I that scene is really tough for me to watch. And especially yeah. in that moment, it was really, uh, I just, I mean, I couldn't just sit quietly and watch the film. Yeah, you were old. I was freaking out. Yeah. I, I, I can't look at her face anymore. I know she's a great actress. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good she is. Well, how do you, how do you feel about the brother-in-law? I mean, he was uh, too. He's pretty horrible. But yeah. he, but he also didn't know. I mean, listen. I yeah. The brother-in-law is awful. <laughs> but Merit, even Merritt, and she finally tells the truth at the end. But there was years where she didn't. Like even her telling the truth is the betrayal of like you could have done this sooner. You know, it's just feel it's so tough this movie. <laughs> I think yeah. I think re remind me if 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 I'm wrong, but the scene where Brooke confronts her when she goes back to the house and tells her I yeah. would never do that. That wasn't scripted, right? I mean, I scripted. Yeah. You <laughs> You're a very good writer, <laughs> Michelle Franco. That must have been scripted. <laughs> That's in it. No, I thought Rick I wrote it incredible. afterwards or something. It was on the script? It's in the oh. script. <laughs> <laughs> it's all falling apart up here. <laughs> That's, a, that's an amazing scene. I mean, the, the strength Brooke brings to that, and she's so simple. She's just direct. She's like, well, I would never do that to my sister. I yeah, mean, that was devastating. Brooke's and, very, very good. Yeah. And Merritt's amazing. Oh, Merritt. Yeah. Merritt's amazing. She's a, yeah. You feel in that scene that she's also, in some sense, has been abused by carrying it. Yeah. yeah. 
Venice was fantastic. Then TIFF Toronto was also a great screening. That one was really fun. Yeah. 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 I got into this habit of like coming, you know, for these Q&As, I would come and just sit and watch the last 30 minutes of the movie. Uh -huh. You know, because it's nice to be in the same world that you guys are in. And at TIFF, I w I, is like where I discovered that it was comedic. Yeah. You know, maybe it's because they're Canadian, but and they own, <laughs> they own comedy. We all know that. But um, no, that was you know different audiences reveal different things about the movie to you if you sit and watch it with them. Well, thank you all for being here, and thank you for this film. I mean, I, yeah. Um, I really do. I I do want to say, you're, to Jessica and Peter, you're. I, I mean, it's the work you do in this film is so personal and intimate, and it's like you let us into this. Like, I just wanted to be with you the whole time, and just right, you're sitting on the couch watching a movie that you can't even watch, or you're <laughs> walking down the sidewalk, and it's just like there's this ease is it, for all the drama that's going on and the the real pain that you're both in. There's just this ease where you both welcome the audience in in a beautiful way. So thank you, and thank, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. thank you so much. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.